Dr. Scott Brooks, I want you to break it down for us on what we should be looking for in coaches, especially for our kids. We both had coaches over the years, so we're trying not to infuse too much of our own uh, mediocre athletic careers. Yeah. And this. <laughs> but, but what's the biggest suggestion you have? Let's start with parents in terms of what they should look for with a coach for their kid. So I, I think when you're starting off, you, you really are looking for someone that's going to treat your kid like you would treat your kid. You want someone that has... Not like my father treated me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, you you, you got to be careful. You're right. It, 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 thinking of what's the ideal. Um, you know, in many ways, the reason that parents start coaching is because they worry that their kid is not being treated fairly. So can you find someone who seems to have those kinds of values, right? That whether it is playing time, you know, do they want to play everyone or not? How do they see this? Is it competitive? Is it recreational? So I think you want to start there. In the end, what I know through my research is how the coach sees your child, whether they see them as a star or not, is going to be reflected in how they play them. So it yeah. should all start with what you want your kid to, to, to receive in terms of a playing experience and whether that matches up with how that coach sees your child. So, so we, we really have to check ourselves first. Are we trying to get our kid in the NBA or on the professional tennis circuit or whatever? Or are we trying to give our kid a, a lifetime sport that they can engage in forever? So that's the first step. So, so what if, what if you, your coach, I mean, you said this, if your coach is not playing your kid in whatever sport, should you as the parent, and let's say uh, high school on up, high school on down, should you as a parent engage? I was gonna say interfere, but that might bias your, your answer. <laughs> should you speak with the coach? So I would tell you, yes, if that's what you feel you should do. The guidelines though, are really to make sure that you've got a similar vocabulary. So you wanna know, how does that coach see your child, really? Right, and, and you want as honest a conversation as possible because if you understand that, then it should make sense how that coach is playing your child. A lot of times that is out of sync and then parents still want the coach to play their child the way they want their child to be played. So if the coach doesn't see your child as a star player, they're not gonna play them as a star player. There should be no surprise. Okay, and your, and your biggest thoughts, I mean, we, we are still in this pandemic. But your, your biggest thoughts in terms of what you should look for from a coach and, and for your kid in sports during a, a pandemic? So during a pandemic, I think we need to really embrace the idea of sport being this, this way of kids getting outside, of having greater social interaction. So I want to coach who's creative in the way that they do practice. I want a coach who's gonna make sure that the kids are out there having fun, even if it's competitive. It needs to be that mix of learning and fun, right? So especially in a time like this with social distancing and all that, we're losing social skills, and particularly for kids, I want sport to be a way that enhances or gets us back on the right road for social interaction. So you really need to coach with some, some flexibility in this time, right? Again, I, I mentioned our coaches as kids, and mine was very much old school. There would not be a change in the moment for uh, social distancing. I, I am sure that the phrase would be, men don't need that. There'd be, <laughs> there'd be, there would be that kind of, so I would suggest as, as a non-coaching expert, find somebody that's not doing that, that's not engaging in that kind of way. What about, I mean, I mentioned in my, my coach of old, what about uh, abusive, language and, and we even see this on the professional level coaches well that's that's part of their their forte how do you advise parents in terms of the language that a coach uses with their kids so i think that that's really context specific so when i'm speaking i'm primarily talking about recreation first and having fun the minute you get into where games and winnings matter then you're going to get an increase in intensity so you need to give them a little bit more leeway i would also suggest that it, there's there's an understanding of how the coach is using it. It's not abusive language just because it is cursing, right? Now, this is the way I understand it, thinking of culturally how this works. So kids can be brought into a culture of a team by the fact that there are 
words and phrases and inside secrets, right? There's an inside culture. And some coaches use that to good effect. I speak to you like young women, young men. That is the language of the world. That doesn't mean curse at them, but it means you may talk and broach subjects that are not talked about elsewhere. Because as a coach, they're coming to you, they're, they are here of their own volition and hopefully, and therefore you have an opportunity to develop them further. So I would say, look at, be a student of how that coach is using any of their language, because they may not curse, it may be abusing and humiliating your child. And, and I've got to say that there's language from my coaches that I remember that I still won't utilize, that I've never utilized in my life. But it was, as you suggested, it was the language of the culture in the moment and it served to be motivational as players. We would joke about who got those special words on that day from the coach as a sign of love. But I, I'm, full, I'm fully with you. I've, I've coached a, a little bit uh, back when my kids were younger and I couldn't in my wildest dreams imagine using that kind of language. So, so let, let's let's get the, the, the profile then. It, it may be a good way for you to think about, about this. Who, who's your favorite coach of all time across sports? Wow. <laughs> yeah, no, you're asking the big question. I mean, name, name a couple, name a couple. John Thompson is, has always been a coach who, who comes to mind. The, the great uh, Georgetown uh, basketball coach. In absolutely. Champion. Patrick Ewan and probably, and, and Alan Iverson is his, his most famous students. Absolutely. Vivian Stringer, it comes, it comes to mind. I'm going to be basketball kind of heavy. <laughs> Bill and what, Walsh. And what, what do they do? What, those two, what, what, what do you see in common from those two great coaches, Vivian Stringer, longtime coach at, at Rutgers, women's basketball coach? What, what do you see? I see folks who are unapologetically who they were. They were authentic. So a Vivian Stringer lived in a time where she could not compete high school wise as an athlete, and she kept pushing the needle. She didn't want to be a cheerleader. And she knew that she was a black woman and she knew the challenges there. So she goes through Cheney State. She knew what sport could do and she was not afraid to recruit anyone and to talk to them about those challenges. She, her husband was sick very early on and you could just see how she embraced her team as a family. She was vulnerable, right? So these coaches love you hard. They push you hard, right? They're there for you forever. And that is what it, that's really for me more important than anything else is the coaches who love you. And as my old head, Claude Gross says, I love you and there ain't nothing you could do about it. Dr. Scott Brooks, thank you for breaking it down for us on thinking about coaching for your kid and otherwise. Thank you, appreciate you. This hour of local news is made possible by contributions from the friends of PBS, members of your PBS station. Thank you. If you have comments about Arizona PBS News, please contact us at one of the addresses on your screen. Thank you. <laughs>